Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at creating a summary chart of data of salesperson by region. And we're going to look at three different ways to do that. One using the sum product function, another using sum ifs, and the third using a pivot table. And we'll compare and contrast them and then you can see which way you feel most comfortable with and which way you prefer. So let's take a look. So here we have our data, which has country, salesperson, region, etc., units and dollars. And we want to fill in this chart here that will give the sum of the values for each salesperson within each region. So first we're going to use sum product. So if I type equals sum product, you can see sum product returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays. I'll hit tab. So my first array is going to be the sales dollars. I'll click in the first cell, hit shift control down arrow, and then F4 to make that an absolute range. And then we'll hit the times, and then we'll go to the next array. The next array will be salesperson, again shift control down arrow, F4 to lock that, equals, in this case, cell J2. But I have to hit the F4 key once, twice, three times to lock the column, but not the row. And it's, we also have to put parentheses around that. And then the next will be times parentheses, and we're going to highlight the region, shift control down arrow, F4 to lock that, equals, and we'll highlight K1. In this case, we'll hit the F4 key once twice to lock the row but not the column. I'll close that parentheses, close it for some product, hit enter, and I have 63,636. I can copy that across, copy it down, we'll just click in the last cell, hit F2, and we'll see we have the right uh, region and salesperson there. So there's the answer using some product. We're basically multiplying three different arrays the sales dollar array times the salesperson array equals the individual salesperson, and the region array equals the individual regions. And the sales dollar array will give us the full list of dollars, and then these two arrays, based on the fact that they're being equal to the individual salesperson and region, will be a series of trues and falses, or ones and zeros, so as you multiply those across, that will give the correct answer when it finds the right combination. And so that's the sum product way to do it. Now let's take a look at sum ifs. Again, I'll click in here and say equals sum ifs, and that adds the cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. I'll hit tab. So my sum range, again, is my dollars. Shift control down arrow, F4. My first criteria range will be salesperson, so I'll highlight that, make that absolute, and my criteria will be Davis, and again, I hit the F, have to hit the F4 key once, twice, three times. My next criteria range will be region, shift control down arrow, F4, and that criteria will be K8, and I'll hit the F4 key once, twice, Close that parentheses, hit enter, and I get the same 63,636. Copy that over, copy it down, and now we have the same results, identical to using some product, but this time using some ifs. And some ifs can be considered a little more logical because you're basically summing the list of values based on certain criteria ranges and their criteria. Now let's take a look at doing the same by using pivot tables. So I'm going to click in my data, go to Insert, Pivot Table, and I'm going to select Existing Worksheet, and I'll click right here so it's right below the other two, and say OK. And now all I need to do is drag Salesperson into Rows, Region into Columns, Dollars into Values. I can close this, and all I have to do is do a little bit of cleanup. One would be to right-click, go to Value Field Settings, Number Format, I'll choose Number, No Decimal Places, 
commas for the thousand separators and say OK and OK. I'm going to go to the design, report layout, and select tabular form, and then grand totals, say off for rows and columns. And now I have the exact same values again, this time using the pivot table process instead of having to create my own formula. So there you have it, three different ways of creating the same information using some product, some ifs, or pivot tables. You can kind of analyze this, see which makes more sense for you, and you can decide which one you'll choose when you need to create a similar table. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.